NASA's SLS moon rocket is doomed to fail. This is not a new idea. It's something that critics of the American space program have been saying for years. It's even something that fans of the American space program have been saying for years. But according to some recent leaked information, it's starting to look like even NASA themselves have come to believe that the SLS is a lost cause. Now, that doesn't mean that the Artemis moon landing is canceled, or at least it doesn't have to be. It just means that there needs to be a change in plans, one that's been a long time coming. This new revelation about the internal struggle at NASA comes from a post on X written by Eric Berger. He says, Based on what I'm hearing, it seems at least 50-50 that NASA's Space Launch System rocket will be cancelled. Not Block 1B, not Block 2, all of it. Eric is the lead space writer at the website Ars Technica. He's an old school journalist who's been doing this for a very long time. He knows people on the inside, his sources are legit, so there's a lot of credibility behind what he writes. Now, the SLS and many of the pieces of infrastructure that go with it, like the Gateway Lunar Space Station and Orion Capsule, have some pretty significant headwinds that are working against them. One is time, another is money, and a third is Donald Trump. With any changeover in US government administrations, there was destined to be a major rethink of the Artemis program. It's very big and very expensive, and very much not working out the way that it was supposed to. Change was inevitable, but just how much change was uncertain. Now we've got Donald Trump storming back into power with the definitive support of the American voter, and he is not messing around this time. The second Trump presidency is all about tearing down the status quo and rebuilding everything in a new image. It's still not clear exactly what that image will be, but we know that efficiency will be a key word going forward. So it would be crazy to think that NASA could remain untouched by all of this change, and SLS could very easily be made into the poster child for inefficient, bloated, wasteful bureaucracy that does not produce results. The development of Orion and SLS has been going on for between 15 and 20 years, and the cost has been astronomical. It's difficult to pin down for sure, the number being floated around is $85 billion. Adjusted for inflation, that's higher than the development cost of the space shuttle, which would be something around $78 billion in today's money, and for all of that, we haven't even launched a single crew. Even if we could get SLS to a point where it's launching people to the moon, we'd still be paying $4 billion per launch just to get four people to lunar orbit. That would be insane even if it was our only way to do that. But it's not. There are easier, cheaper ways to get the Orion capsule to the moon, and they exist right now. The wait is over, our Black Friday sale is live, and so is our complete new collection. Here is what's waiting for you. The collection has everything from bold statement designs like the Stranded Tee, or retro-inspired favorites like the I'd Rather Be On Mars mug and shirt. And right now, you can take 20% off your entire order with code Black Friday. But don't wait, these designs are exclusive and stock is limited. Once they are gone, they are gone, and the sale ends on Monday. So click the link in the description to shop the full collection now, and don't forget to use code Black Friday at checkout for 20% off. Time is a finite resource. The first SLS contracts were written up in 2011. The rocket was originally supposed to launch in 2015, then 2017, then 2019. It did eventually lift off in 2022, and it performed well, but we have not seen any tangible progress since Artemis 1. What we have seen in that time is six test flights of the SpaceX Starship, which, in fairness, didn't fly a payload to the moon, it hasn't flown any payload at all yet aside from a banana, but Starship is a significantly more ambitious rocket than SLS. The whole point of SLS was that it was supposed to be simple. 
Just take some old space shuttle parts and recycle them into a fully disposable rocket that can lob a crew capsule in the general direction of the moon. The bar was set pretty low, to be honest. The majority of the work on SLS and Orion was handed over to NASA's most trusted contractors, Boeing and Lockheed Martin. Most trusted at the time, but neither of these two have managed to execute on anything in the spaceflight industry for over a decade now. So what exactly do we think is going to happen when an Elon Musk-led Department of Government Efficiency gets its hands on SLS? It's going to be a bloodbath. Here's the thing though. Cutting wasteful expenses is easy. Finding practical alternatives is more of a challenge. Is it really better to just scrap everything that has already been done? We are talking about something in the neighborhood of $100 billion that's totally down the drain in the hopes that the grass might be greener on the other side. Not to mention the human cost. There are a lot of good jobs on the line that only exist because of these NASA SLS contracts. Almost all of them are in red states that put their support behind Donald Trump and, by extension, Elon Musk. It's one thing to sit behind a computer and rip on the Boeing Starliner and say that it should be cancelled. It's a whole other thing to look at a lot of hardworking people in Louisiana who built those spaceships and tell them that they are out of work. Anyway, what does the other side of the fence even look like? If not SLS, then what? Well, the leading theory among the space establishment seems to be that we can keep the majority of the Artemis moon landing plan as it is. Meaning that we have a SpaceX Starship lunar lander. That is mission critical hardware, it always has been. There is no other vehicle in any stage of development that has any hope of landing people on the moon and accomplishing the mission objectives of Artemis. Not in this decade, at least. And we all know where the Starship is in its development cycle. Still very much in the beginning phases, but SpaceX is building a lot of momentum right now and they will only be accelerating over the years to come. And we also have the Orion capsule. This is not a perfect vehicle, but it's fine. It can go to lunar orbit and it can come back to Earth. Yes, there are some issues with the heat shield, but that's more of a problem around reusing the capsule. It's not going to pose any danger to the crew. As long as we can put enough thrust underneath the Orion, it can do the job that it was built for in a reasonably efficient manner. And the Orion does very much exist right now. It's ready to go. So all we really need is a substitute for the SLS. And it's not too much of a stretch to think that one really powerful rocket can be replaced by two less powerful but still very large rockets. We could launch the Orion capsule with its European service module on top of a SpaceX Falcon Heavy. Falcon 9 is already crew rated. It wouldn't be much of a stretch to certify Falcon Heavy for crewed flight. It has a perfect success rate over many years of service. The cargo fairing size of Falcon Heavy is the same width as SLS Block 1, it's just not as tall, but that's fine because we'll be removing the interim cryogenic stage from the Orion stack. That's the engine that it needs to put itself into lunar orbit. This is where rocket number 2 comes in. That's the ULA Vulcan Centaur. It's a fairly new rocket, it's only flown twice, but what we're really interested in is the Centaur 5 upper stage. It's a very high energy and high efficiency vehicle that burns liquid hydrogen and was designed specifically to meet very demanding requirements of national security missions and interplanetary payloads. If the Falcon Heavy can get the Orion crew into Earth orbit, and the Vulcan can do the same with its Centaur upper stage, then those two vehicles could potentially meet up in orbit and dock together into one complete spaceship, the Orion Centaur, or whatever they want to call it. That should be able to provide enough energy to send the Orion into lunar orbit, maybe even a better lunar orbit than what the SLS would have been able to do. Then it meets up with Starship. People go to the moon, they live there for a few days, they come back up, return to Orion, and come home. The cost of launching one Falcon Heavy is just under $100 million. The cost of launching one Vulcan is just over $100 million. So even if all the other associated costs with Orion and the docking procedure and the crew somehow add up to a billion dollars. That's still one quarter of the price of SLS, and we get the same result. Now, the big question that has been looming over the Artemis program for years, 
why do we even need the two vehicle approach when it might be possible to do the whole thing in one starship? Well, that's complicated, but I'll just present the biggest hurdle in the whole plan and then you can make up your own mind. It's probably very possible to get people into Earth orbit inside a starship, and then after a refueling session, it's probably possible to land those people on the moon inside the starship. No major concerns here. It's getting back that becomes challenging. So first off, you'd probably have to refuel the starship either on the moon or in lunar orbit. That already sounds way too complicated, especially for our first mission to the surface of the moon in 70 years. I'm not saying any of this is stuff that couldn't be figured out eventually, it's just not stuff that we should be worrying about on the first go. Then, if you can get the ship heading back to Earth, it's got to re-enter the atmosphere. The current lunar starship design doesn't even have a heat shield, and even if it did, coming down from the moon is a totally different thing than re-entering from low Earth orbit. The velocity is much higher. We'd be looking at over 40,000 kilometers per hour compared to 28,000 for a typical Starship re-entry from orbit. That's a lot more stress on the heat shield and the structure of the rocket. And there's no way to properly stress test the hardware without sending a Starship around the moon and back again. How many of those tests would you want to see before it's okay to put people in there? It's a fine goal to have for some time down the road, but if we're going to be serious about getting to the moon as quickly as possible and not falling behind the Chinese, then we need to be practical about what's possible right now with the resources that we have available. That was supposed to be the whole point of Artemis in the first place. Use what we have to get to the moon fast and assert American dominance. It was Donald Trump and Mike Pence who put these wheels in motion to begin with. Arguably, it was Pence who was much more passionate about space exploration. Trump is just passionate about winning, winning in every venue. If he sees an opportunity to beat China on the moon, then he's gonna go for it. And I think it's safe to say that Trump isn't going to see SLS as a winning bet. So there will be a change coming, but we'll just have to wait and see which way the wind blows.